Hello students, so welcome back to our discourse analysis class and we will discuss about something which create a text is more understandable and readable that is about cohesions with me, Pa Afif, Ikhwan Muslimin so firstly, I need you to observe this picture this is the pictures of chains so what do you understand about this? there is a cohesion between the chains here so it's about the relationship between items in a text such as words, phrases and clauses or other items such as pronoun, noun, and conjunctions. So to make a text is more understandable and readable, so it's of course each part of each element inside the discourse or text, it should be linked together to talk about something uh, in similar way. There are some parts or some characteristics you can adjust that a text is cohesive by having some characteristics like the text should have a reference, lexical cohesions, collocations, conjunctions, substitutions, and ellipses. So reference here is about the relationship between words and pronouns that refer to that words. For example, you use I to represent something, they to represent something, it's part of reference. The next one is lexical cohesions is about the relationship between words with similar, related, and different meaning. And the next one is collocations, is about words that commonly co-occur in a text. So we'll discuss the first three uh, characteristics of creating cohesive inside the text or discourse, mm -hmm. and we'll discuss the rest in the next video. The first is reference. There are some types of reference in a discourse. You can find that the first is anaphoric reference. It is a reference that usually appear in common text, like a word or phrase refers back to another word or phrase used earlier in the text. When you take a look at this part of exam this example as a part of a book, first in the US, then all over the world, women became comfort to the book of for love message. When it blah blah blah. So the word it, the pronoun it here refers to the previous noun mentioned that is about the book blah blah blah. So this one is called as anaphoric reference. And the next one we have cataphoric reference. This one describes an item which refers forward to another word or phrase which is used later in a text. So in anaphoric reference, you will talk about the things or the, the nouns first earlier, then you will use the reference after that. But here, cataphoric reference, you will use in different way or reversed way. So you will mention the reference like an example. It seems everyone read that self-help book. So you will use the word that here as a reference something which will be mentioned after that. Greg, Behrendt and Lichtuchheil is just not into you. Is the book which is, a ref which is the reference of the word that. So that comes earlier than the, the things or noun which will be the reference. The third reference is exophoric reference. It refers to looking outside a text to the situation in which the text occurs to, for the identity of the item being referred to. So for example, there is a talk between customer and a seller of the book and the customer holds a book and titles something. So the customer asks to the seller, what kind of book would you say this is? Where would you put it on your bookshelf? So here, so the customer didn't mention about the title of the book, but maybe the customer is actually looking at a certain book or holding a certain book and the seller also notice that things. So they know the context that is talking about a certain book. So it here is not referring to a certain words in a sentence, but it's about something outside the talk and they already have a context there. So both the customer and the seller, or speaker and hear, or the author and the reader, they are in the same context. That's why they know each other to what um, something refer to when a pronoun or a certain word is used as a reference. And then the last one is homophoric reference. This is about where the identity of the item can be retrieved by reference to a cultural knowledge in general than a specific context of the text. For example, uh, first in the US, then all over the world, women became converts of the book, blah, blah, blah. So the world, the US here, means that this book is very popular in America. That's why when someone say about the book, everyone will understand that the book is about the love message. 
or maybe when someone's talking about uh, Budi and Adi talking about the president hey Budi saya ketemu dengan presiden so the word president here refers to the president of the country that is Indonesia not not the president so there is a culture knowledge that they have a, a specific president that is called as Indonesia president okay so the next discussion is about lexical cohesion so the first lexical cohesion can be maintained when someone's do repetitions or repeating something in a text for example um, Jane Abi Dera 27 and Stuart Gilbert 27 blah 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 Stu was quiet and shy so Stu here is repetitions of the name Stuart so it means that the author would like to maintain the message that uh, the author is still talking about the same person that is Stuart and the next one synonymy is mentioning something in similar meaning for example I'm just not one of those blokes that finds approaching women easy the book assumes all men are confident so men here and the blokes they have similar meaning but the author used different terms because the author would like to avoid both inside uh, reading this text and the next one is antonymy antonymy means that we would like to describe something in a positive way or contrasting meaning for example shy and forward they are in different meaning for example here and this term 28 a builder says his word the book will drive women towards dodgy men only real players do full on charm he says the rest of us are both heads so here there is a portion of persons that uh, are categorized as real players do full on charm real players the opposite of uh, real players is and not real players but they also would like to avoid the the use of not real players by using another in more interesting and uh, creating more feelings uh, with the same meaning uh, that is about booth heads so the author here used the opposite meaning to describe similar thing real player and booth heads and try to talk uh, the characteristics of people by mentioning woman toward dodgy men mean here that dodgy is the characteristics of people but it can be in women or men but uh, the author use women contrast to men here so antonymy can be used to maintain the cohesion inside the text the next one an author can keep the cohesion of a text by using the hyponymy Hyponymy refers to classes of lexical items where the relationship between them is one of general specific. An example of or in a class to member type relationship. For example, when we are talking about tree, the hyponymy of the tree, we have oak tree, coconut tree, palm tree, mango tree, and many, many other tree. So those are examples of a tree. So when you talk about something more specific it's still talking about a similar idea that is linked to something bigger that is about the tree itself and the last one is about meronymy meronymy is a lexical item are in whole to part relationship with each other for example when we have couple we will remember about combinations of men and women or boy and girl or maybe when you are talking about married couple you can um, address someone's name like Jane and Stuart or maybe when you are going to my previous example about hyponymy about tree so you will not uh, mention the meronymy of tree is oak tree mango tree coconut tree not but you will say the meronymy of the trees are you have trunk you have branches you have leaf you have roots and many other things and the last discussions um, for today's video is that about collocations as part of things that you can use to create cohesion inside the text. So collocation describes associations between vocabulary items which have a tendency to co-occur such as combinations of adjectives and nouns. For example, we have real estate agents. So real estate, they usually co-occur together, right directions. Indonesian people, 
or Ozymin and we sometimes also use um, something work together like love and hate, black and white. So when we have an example like a real estate agent agrees the Ozymin need more help blah 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 blah. So here there is there are two words that co-occur that happen together in a text or discourse. So there are two types of collocations. The first is expectancy relations, means that there is a predictable relationship between verb and either the subject or object of the verb. For example, here we have um, in Western um, context, they usually connect between waste time, love book, dating sites, art classes, um, art sky, and many other things. So mostly those two words come together in a text. And the next one, lexical bundles. Lexical bundles is combinations of words or multi-words in a certain scientific uh, product like academic essay, universe textbooks, uh, thesis, or any other things like as a result of. So there are some words there, as, result, a, uh, or. They are bundled together to create a certain meaning. This one is used to create cohesion. Um, to link between sentence and sentence. On the other hand, if you look at as can be seen, blah, 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 and any other example of lexical bundles. Okay, so this is the end of our discussions about three parts of things that can be used to create cohesion inside the discourse. So keep learning, discourse analysis. See you later, and thank you very much.